Hey, welcome to the Kimmy Kato Show. Uh, Kimmy Kato is back. Kimmy Kato has been gone for a little while, for a couple weeks. The guy is so busy. Hey, Kimmy, what's happening? Hello. Hi, Jeremiah. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Well, th you just introduced me. I was going to introduce myself. I'm Jeremiah. I'm, I'm Kimmy Sidekick. I'm taking the journey with him on this show, and we're learning about uh, everything Japanese pop culture and food and talking about so much great stuff, drinks and uh, fashion, music, and uh, I'm just so happy that you're back, Kimmy. I missed you. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, it's great to be back. Um, I've been away for like a couple of weeks, but now, yes. Yeah, uh, can you tell? Was it? Were you on an undisclosed location? I was, no, I was actually it? in Tokyo, <laughs> um, just doing some work, uh, business meetings, um, setting up things for the upcoming year. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll do a lot, everything to do with music. Um, that's what I do. So, yeah. Yeah. But Did you see any great? great... Oh, it's good to have you back. I, I, I truly missed you. Uh, and our talks, they're, they're so, so much fun. Did you see any good music acts while you were out there? I or? actually did. Um, I went to see Shag with Sugizo. Oh, so, you know, our first guest of the show, Sugizo. Uh, he invited me to come see his jam band, the Shag. Uh, and then I also went to see one of his collaborations with the classical um, classical team. It was a completely... So Sugizo was... He was performing in a jazz... Uh, a, a jam band. And then him performing in a classical show. It was completely different, but totally amazing. Um... It's just great to see him perform. But yeah. I was looking I, for his violin work and his classical work. Is it under a different band name? I mean, yeah. Was... So, no, um, I think he, he does collaborations with various other, you know, various classical uh, artists. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a, a very interesting, unique classical, what do you call it? It was a it was a string, it was a string group, and no, Sugizo was no Sugizo was performing as a guest. So they did collaboration. They they did some classical pieces, to to um, uh, rock pieces, covers in classic. So that was amazing. Classical mm. songs covered in classical music style. Mm. Well, I'll have to get some uh, some some tips from you picked out the right stuff to start out with but yeah Sigiz was amazing he was in our uh, in your first episode which was about two or three weeks ago yes. uh, definitely yeah uh, uh, tell everybody to check that out well I'm excited to talk about our topic today this is one of my favorites near and dear to my heart you know uh what are we talking about Kimmy so today you know we've been talking about music for a few times now um so I thought we'd talk about films and Japanese films and international films and I thought I'd bring on a very good friend of mine uh, um, Eugene Nomura to hello. our show today hello hello how are you Eugene very good very good thank you for coming on our show no problem, no um, problem. so happy to. I'm gonna embarrass you for a bit I'm gonna talk about you quick bio <laughs> A rundown of who you are, okay. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. so that our listeners know who you, you know, get to know who you are, and so kick back for a bit. Okay. So, here is Eugene Nomura, who was born in Tokyo, Japan. He's an actor and a producer, and some of his best-known works are Free Guy, Tokyo Vice, and Emperor. So after returning to Tokyo, he worked on an award-winning film, 800 Two Lap Runners. He was honored with the Kinema Junpo Best Ten Award for Best New Male Actor and Mainichi Film Award for Best New Actor. Um, just as a side note, the Kinema Junpo Best Ten Award began in 1924. Their Best Ten lists are considered to be iconic and prestigious. The Mainichi Film Award is a series of annual film awards sponsored by Mainichi Shimbun, which is one of the largest newspaper companies in Japan. So his acting career began at 
14 playing the lead in an award-winning NHK television drama, Kizuna, in 1987. He received a scholarship to the Lee Strasberg Institute and performed at the Actors Studio in New York. Eugene has worked in over 40 films, 50 TV series in Japan, began producing films in, in 2009. His most recent work will be in Tokyo Vice HBO Max, uh, which we will be digging into deeper in a minute. But um, first of all, I wanted to ask you, what are your path to a life of filmmaking? Is there one road or one path for a young filmmaker in Japan? What's my path? Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you think of your life being a filmmaker an actor a filmmaker well, it's, it's been a ride for sure um, and working internationally it's a whole different ball game than just staying in Japan on that island right. mm -hmm. uh, working in a small circle of people uh, you, it, is, it is a small world I mean anywhere you go um but I think international, because I was raised in the, the American school, and I think people like us that can speak English, that understand the Western culture as well, it's, it's people like us that we need to kind of expand and try to make Japan more global in, that, in many ways. Um, and so I think that's kind of the main path, is to globalize that island. <laughs> it's mm, kind of oh. my goal and amazing and i've been acting for the longest time too and that's my passion and so i think everything is connected uh producing is acting is i've also done casting i've um mm -hmm. i actually went into acquisitions for a while as well for film so i've done pretty much all aspects of creating a film even selling it so <laughs> yeah so I think right, from of... making to selling. Yes, yes. Yeah, it was, from it was yeah, making, a, yeah. casting, financing, I guess everything, right? You've been yeah. through that. Uh, everything but directing. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I would be on set. Sometimes I would come with the whiteboard and I'll light somebody. Or, <laughs> you know, that happens too. Um, but I think other than that, yeah. And the selling part was a whole different... Um, angle that I learned a lot from as well because I was always into the to the creative side mm -hmm. of you know is it real the acting and it came all from the acting and then when you go to acquisitions it's like a whole different ball game it's like oh okay it doesn't matter <laughs> really okay so this this sells and this doesn't kind of a thing so so I, so you, you know you mentioned about and you know, I know you that you've you've worked in the Japanese music, uh, sorry, the Japanese film industry and the Hollywood film industry, and you mentioned a little about being Japan being a small island. What is the biggest difference that you've kind of encountered? Um, I think the, the biggest, difference? the biggest difference. I mean, there's many differences. I'm sure there is. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, like in Japan, there's no unions for actors. Um, a lot of actors in Japan don't train um, like actors here they come from all over the world and they you know they study acting they you know people get into the method they do this that you know like a baseball player practicing baseball every day um, but that's not really done in Japan um, I think kabuki actors do <laughs> but most actors don't train in Japan so that's a whole different ball game um, and so there's many differences, but I think um, the main thing is, even with the TV networks, etc., um, they haven't really studied the creative art or how to direct. Or if you ask a Japanese director what an imaginary line is, they'd be like, what is that? Um, hmm. So there's a lot of things that they haven't studied, but that's why there's a lot of good stuff and... You know, there's a lot of pros and cons with the Japanese film industry. Uh, we're used to creating films with a lower budget. 
And finally, that came out in a good way with Godzilla Minus One. They're like, oh my God, you could create a good film with, you know, CGI with that, that, you know, with so much less of a budget. Um, but I think now it's time for, I think, Japan to become Asia. So, yeah, there's a lot of, lo lots of differences. Interesting. Um, so, because you were raised by cult culturally, um, and I, I'm sure that's one that's one of your many assets that you have to being able to uh, bridge the creative and cultural gaps between international and Japan. Um, what are your challenges that you've faced? <laughs> I faced many. <laughs> I am sure you have indeed. <laughs> yes, um, I'm. A, I'm actually also a quarter Romanian. My dad's half Japanese and half Romanian. He was born in Bucharest, um, and so that's why being in an international school that itself is a big difference. Um, when I did my first uh, period, the samurai films, and I went to Kyoto, and that's a whole different environment as well because they do all the most all the period pieces and I went and my head shape is not flat like the Japanese regular Japanese person the first hmm. thing the makeup person did was hit my head so what the <laughs> hell's wrong with their head we're not gonna make a wig to fit that head you know how much a wig costs <laughs> like I have no clue but suddenly getting whacked in the head I was I think 18 or 19 um, you know and I was like what the What's going on? Why am I getting whacked, like hitting the head for? But things like that. Um, and then so it's it's always, I think, because Japan has mainly Japanese people and learning, learning the lines, reading the kanjis, uh, you know, the mannerisms, etc. That was a whole different ballgame. Um, I had to, I think I was more foreign when I started because I had to put, I couldn't read all the kanjis. Uh, like mm -hmm. the first audition I went to for, um, and I didn't even really want to be an actor at the time. Um, but I went, I got called in, so I went and I had to read this thing. And so I asked my tutor to write the furigana, like these uh, hiraganas mm -hmm. next to the Chinese characters. And then I was reading that and I got stuck. And I was meeting my uh, my friends at the game center. <laughs> And I was kind of late. Um, so I was like, ah, I gotta leave. <laughs> and, the, the, and the people were like, what, you're leaving in the middle of the audition? I'm like, yeah, I kind of have to. I, have a, I promised my buddies I'd meet them, so I can't leave them hanging. <laughs> and I just left. Um, because you couldn't read the script? <laughs> no, I was reading it, and I noticed the time. I was like, oh, no, I have to go. <laughs> and they're like, what? You're leaving in the middle of the audition? It was the final audition, too. But, right. Um, but you I got, got that part? I yeah, that's how that's how I got the lead. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you got the lead because you were so bold. Because no one do this. I, I don't think no one does that in America, but um no one does that in Japan. Definitely. Yeah. And not. I think I, mean, I think it was it was because I was luck I mean it was a story about a returnee about a kid mm. it was a, it was based on a true story about this japanese kid that was raised in florida mm. and at that time in the 19 it was 1986 at the time right yeah um returnees were a big problem in japan still yes yeah, like me yes yeah, so like getting <laughs> bullied this that a lot of the stuff and this was a true story about this kid that really got bullied and then he mm. had to go back um and it was a story about him and at the audition, it was one other actor and me. And the other actor, I think he really wanted to act because he was acting like, mm. and I was getting goosebumps because I was like, oh my God, it's so, it's... oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's so <laughs> bad. <laughs> okay. It was so cringy, cringe worthy. <laughs> Very corny. Than... And it's okay. like, okay, I... okay, calm down a bit. But I just read to the person in front of me who ended up to be the director. And that's, and then I just got stuck and then I had to go. And so I was just genuinely, you know, just being a regular kid. Um, a difficult kid. <laughs> very simple kid that's a, that's actually kind of a returnee in a way. Right, um, right. And then I just left. 
<laughs> but... Interesting. They should have made a film about me. Because I was an overseas returning as well when I was... So I lived, you know, until I was 18. I was in... The What's Egypt. that like? The, this is my my naivety. Is, is when you, you said going back and forth, uh, yeah. returning, right? What's that yes, like? Yes. I mean, Eugene, what is, well, I what mean, does that mean? Imagine, what happens? So imagine yourself... Uh, being raised abroad, Jeremiah, and and you you're you're an American citizen, and you go back, to, well, you actually go to America for, for almost the first time when you're 18. You kind of speak English, but you don't. You speak better Japanese than you say say you look, right? So I was a Japanese, looking like a Japanese, but I was a very with dodgy Japanese that couldn't <laughs> really read the the kanji like Eugene. Um, so I would get stuck if I had to read something. Um, I had difficulties getting on a train because I couldn't read the, the destinations yeah. because back in that, back in the early 90s, like early 90s, most of the train stations were all in Japanese. Hardly any of the station had English. Now, mm. now most of the stations have an English language so that people can... There's a lot of travelers that come into Japan now, but back in the day, it wasn't. So everything was challenging. So imagine yourself on the flip side of you going, coming back to the, well, going to the United States, say going to LA, coming to LA, 18. It's all exciting. It was full of excitement. You know, I, I was, you, you were finding things about yourself, your roots, yeah. your culture for the, almost the first time and mind blowing eye-opening you meet different kind of people that you've never met because you've always grown up abroad and you don't meet the people in america say so i grew up in the uk all my friends were english or non non-japanese anyways very um international and then you go back to a very monocultural country mm. very japan japan is very monocultural um people say it's international but it really isn't um, <laughs> it still isn't yeah, right right um would you guys have it any other way eugene and or kimmy i mean if you had to do it over would you would you chew and you knew the differences and what you had to go through would you would you choose that again or would you how would, would you yeah yeah what about yeah. you eugene yeah i just would try not to fight so much <laughs> take it easy <laughs> chill out did, did you get a lot country. of fights with kids yeah, here in America? Yeah. yeah and then and after i did countries? after like the first tv thing because i get bullied in the tv show oh uh, goodness so then when i'm riding the train some guy would suddenly he'll be holding onto the handle and then drop his hand on my head and then i would have to go go at him mm. because he would wow. think i'm the kid in the show that's getting bullied by everybody getting his ass whooped every day. And so then you get picked back. on, they would, they would test you. Yeah. Oh, so, so I would have to so go So people wild. recognize you. Yeah, yeah. That you're on the show. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> it sounds oh, wow. terrible. Sounds like you get hit in the back of the head a lot. <laughs> I did when I was a kid, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and Hollywood, too. <laughs> Makeup chair. <laughs> hey, we got to take a real quick break. We are with Eugene Nomura. He's an actor. He's a producer. You can find him on Instagram at Eugene Nomura. I'm going to spell it E-U-G-E-N-E-N-O-M-U-R-A. It's all one word.